One of the strangest things on the island is this weird concrete box. It almost looks like an office building. What appear to be windows in an apartment block are not windows at all. They're little circular openings, almost like a speaker on a radio. Rusting structures along the beach suggest an attempt was made to protect against a landing force. But not all of the defenses here are immediately visible. There's a huge underground complex carved into one of these mountains. There are tunnels here that are big enough to drive a truck through. This wasn't some little hideaway. This was a serious underground base. As small and insignificant as it appears today, this island came very close to triggering a nuclear war. Yang Shi Rong grew up here and remembers a time when this beach was strictly out of bounds. We could not go to the sea in the past. We couldn't be near the beach. It's ironic. We are surrounded by the sea, but we rarely saw it. This is Kinmen Island. Within sight of neighboring China, this territory actually belongs to another country, Taiwan. I think people in Kinmen understand both Taiwanese and Chinese culture. It's a bridge of communication between Taiwan and the mainland. This unique understanding was born out of the Chinese Civil War, which came to a head in 1949. Mao totally defeats the nationalist forces and drives them out of China and onto the island of Taiwan where they exist to this day as the Republic of China. Chairman Mao's communists, the People's Liberation Army, had ousted the nationalists led by General Chiang Kai-shek. Mao Zedong seats himself in power in mainland China, and the previous government of China under Chiang Kai-shek and the nationalist movement flees to the island of Taiwan. But they don't only take the island of Taiwan, they take this little island group directly off the coast of China. The biggest island of the group is Kinmen, just four miles from the mainland. There's no way that the communists wanted to tolerate what they saw as subversives right off their coast. And in 1949, Mao's forces attacked Kinmen Island. The defenses still on show today suggest they knew they were coming. There's a 56-hour battle for Kinmen as amphibious Chinese communist forces land on Kinmen and try to wrest it from its nationalist defenders. Bullet-ridden buildings are testament to the ferocity of the fighting. The People's Liberation Army was in here at the time. This was the command headquarters. We were surrounded. It was a war of annihilation. Yet Mao's communist army wasn't up to the challenge of an amphibious assault. They establish a beachhead, but they cannot break out onto the rest of the island. They didn't have the technical capability to put a big enough force on shore. Those that did make it onto the beaches were met with mines, bunkers, and obstacles backed up by a force far larger than they expected. Using these beach obstacles, using these defenses, Chiang Kai-shek pushes them back into the sea. For Mao, it was a disaster. 9,000 communist soldiers stormed ashore. The majority were killed or taken prisoner. There were corpses everywhere here. It was tragic. The Republic of China forces were able to repel the attack, but it wouldn't be the last time they came under fire. Separated by only a few miles of water, the islanders knew it was just a matter of time. We could see mainland China from here. It's really close. You could see it clearly in that direction. That's mainland China. The Taiwanese build up Kinmen as a major defensive bastion. They honeycomb all the cliffs and hills with bunkers, and they make this a much more defensible place. The Cold War was now running hot throughout East Asia. 
and the island found itself on the front line. We saw Korea falling to the communists, Indochina falling to the communists, all of China falling to the communists. The U.S. felt that it was losing this battle of containment and that something had to be done. U.S. President Dwight Eisenhower, fearing a domino effect of nations falling to communism, offered protection to the Chinese nationalists on Taiwan and Kinmen. In 1954, there's a major international crisis when Mao Zedong bombards Kinmen and the neighboring islands with artillery, forcing the United States to tell the communists to cease and desist. There's a second crisis in 1958, much bigger one. Mainland China really unloaded on Kinmen Island. They launched an artillery barrage that went on day and night and just didn't stop. Over 44 days, the People's Liberation Army would deliver 470,000 artillery rounds. 当时就是金门都在大陆的炮, At the time, Kinmen was within the shooting range of mainland artillery. So in the aftermath, the whole of Kinmen suffered tragically. A lot of houses were destroyed, especially the places located near the artillery ground. They were all burnt to scorched earth, to ashes. It seemed only a matter of time before the nationalists would have to evacuate Kinmen. The big question in the mind of everyone in China, everyone on Taiwan, and even back in Moscow, is what is Washington going to do? This tiny island would bring the world to the brink of nuclear war. But what role would this bizarre concrete box play in the ongoing dispute? In 1958, Kinmen Island was coming under attack from Mao's communist China. America had offered protection to the nationalists, so all eyes were now on Washington. In the U.S. at one point, the Joint Chiefs of Staff recommended considering nuclear weapons to stop China's aggression. Fortunately, cooler heads prevailed. Eisenhower resisted calls for a nuclear strike. Instead, he combined a show of naval strength with the supply of military hardware that could fire from the safety of Kinmen's bunkers and tunnels. The United States started to give uh, heavy howitzers. These guns made it possible for the forces on Kinmen Island to return fire. They were able to start shelling the mainland. This initiated a curious ritual. On alternate days, the gunners on each side would prepare their guns, load them up, and bombard the other side while the other side kept their heads down. While this bizarre artillery duel continued, the Cold War was evolving. 